Hello everyone. Welcome to Statistics Part 1. In this session, we are going to learn what is statistics, types of data, basic difference between bar graph and histogram, steps to check before doing a histogram. Let us observe these pics. What do these pics have in common? Yes, you're right. All these are the sources of information or data for us. Who will use and why? Let me give few examples in this regard. The data or the information collected is used in different fields like politics, business, industries, real estate, etc. Let us study one example in detail. In industries, toy industry. We know that toy industries manufacture toys and releases into the market. But how many? The answer lies in the data collection. These industries get the data related to the number of children in a country and depending upon this data, it manufactures toys and releases into the market and gets the profit. And this was possible by math, a special branch called as statistics that deals with the study of collection, analysis, interpretation, organization and presentation of data. And we know that data collected is of two categories. We call it as primary or secondary. What is primary data? The data that is collected by the investigator. That means the person he himself or herself is a direct witness in the data collection. Whereas in the secondary data, it is collected from a source. That means the data already exists. And now the data is ready, but a representation of data plays a key role in statistics. And we have been doing this representation of data in our previous classes in the form of a pictograph, bar graph, um, pie chart, histogram, etc. But before representation of data, we need to understand how to analyze the data. Let us take an example and proceed. Now, before analyzing the data, let us just uh, study the basic difference between bar graph and histogram. And here is the pic which tells us the bar graphs has gaps between the bars whereas the histogram has no gaps between the bars and the equal width of the bars represents equal class interval. So from now onwards, we should be able to identify easily what is a bar graph and what is a histogram by looking at it easily. Now let us start understand how to analyze the data. Let me just take you to one example of collection of data related to the blood groups of a particular class where the strength is 30. Now, if I just uh, collect the data A, B or A, B or O randomly and put it on a piece of paper and uh, give it to you or one of you and ask some questions built, uh, related to that data, it is little difficult to answer immediately. But if I organize the data, same data in the form of a table, which we call it as a frequency distribution table. And then it is easy for me to answer to the questions based on the blood group and the number of students easily. And another group of data let us take. And here I have a large group of data. And I can't represent the same data in the form of a frequency distribution table as I did here. 
So I need to modify a little. What is that? Whenever I have a large group of data, I need to divide the entire data into groups, which we call it as a class interval. And this data can be represented in the form of a histogram. But before doing a histogram, we need to check two things. One is the class intervals, whether it is continuous or non-continuous. This is an example of a continuous class interval. How? The upper limit of a particular class interval and the lower limit of the next class interval is one and the same. In such case, it is called as a continuous class intervals. And this one is a non-continuous class interval. Now let us study this example and know few terms related to this data. We should know what is class size or class width and class mark. Class size as the word represents, it is the size of the class. And how do I get it? I get the class size by subtracting the lower limit from the upper limit. So what is lower limit and what is upper limit? Let me clarify that. So all the numbers which lie on the left side of these group of class intervals are called as the lower class limits. And all these numbers which lie to the right side are called as the upper class limits. Now to find out the class width or the class size, I have to subtract the lower limit from the upper limit. And how I get 15 minus 10 is equal to 5 or 20 minus 15 is equal to 5. That is a class width is same throughout the distribution. So this type of data can be represented in the form of a histogram directly without any modification. Now let us take another example. Now, as I said, this type of data is non-continuous. So can I represent this data directly in the form of a histogram? No, that will not be the correct histogram. So whenever I have the variation, that is the upper class limit of this class and the lower limit of the next class, if I notice there is a gap of one unit. Since the gap is one unit, I have to reduce all the lower limits of this particular group of class intervals by half unit and all the upper class limits by increase by half unit. So then my data will appear in this form where I notice the upper limit and lower limit of the next class is one and the same. Now this type of data is ready for us to represent it in the form of a histogram. Now let us study another example. Now in this example, if I see, it represents the continuous class intervals, but as I said, the width of the class, width of the class is not the same. Two minus one is one. 5 minus 3 is 2. 10 minus 7 is 3. The width is not one and the same. And another point we need to remember, we should know what is class mark. Class mark is nothing but the average of the particular class. Class mark may vary from class to class because it is obtained by adding lower limit plus upper limit divided by 2. So, for example, if I want to calculate the class mark, let us go to the previous example. Here, 10 plus 5, 15 by 2 gives me 7.5. 20 plus 15. 35, 35 divided by 2 gives me 17.5. That is the class mark may change or will change from particular class to class, but class width or the class size will not change. Now, let us study this example. As I have said, this is a continuous class interval, cl class size. 
or uh, what is the difference here? Here the difference is uh, class size. Class size is different. So can I represent the same data in the form of histogram? No. Then I need to modify the data and get a new frequency for the representation. And how do I get the new frequency? Which is obtained by the formula minimum class size by class size into frequency. So let me know what is the minimum class size and how do I find it? So this is a table which has the width of the entire class intervals. If I notice this entire column, what is the minimum value I have? It is one. So the minimum class width of this group of class interval should be taken as one unit and the class width should be calculated for that particular class and frequency again you have to take for that particular class interval. So let us calculate and see how we get the new frequency. For example, the first one, the minimum width is one. And the width of the particular class is 1 and the frequency is 5. So when I simplify, it is 5 units. Let us take another example. Here minimum width is 1 unit and the particular class width is 2 units and the frequency is 6. So when I simplify, I'll be getting 3 units. So this is how I calculate the new frequency, which is also called as a length of the rectangle. And this class interval column and the new frequency column will be used to calculate the histogram. Now whenever you are supposed to do a histogram you need to remember two factors. One is check whether the class interval is continuous or non-continuous. If it is non-continuous make it continuous by checking the gap between them and if it is continuous check the width of the class. If there is a difference in width of the class, use a formula minimum class width by class width into frequency and get the modified frequency which will be used to plot the histogram. So this is how we do a correct histogram. Hope you have understood today's concepts and don't miss the next session which will be on measures of central tendency. Thank you.